And that was it. I'm going to show you what's been marked S10 for identification, which is, I believe, what you've said to be the 22 short <coughs> by the bed of Mr. Fitzgerald. Is that correct? Correct. Any of that ammunition found in Fitzgerald's drawer? Any of that ammunition fit that gun? No. What area is this? Okay, this is the basement bedroom area under uh, of Mr. Beganwald. Uh, now we're looking at the <coughs> vanity with the uh, jewelry box on it, uh, various items that are on top of the vanity, and. Uh, that, that's the drawer of the jewelry box, and that's the uh, ring uh, of an onyx type that was recovered. Uh, here's another photo of the ring <coughs> laying out on a table for better clarity. 11 a.m. These are just various other items that uh, that were contained within. That's a staircase that goes from the living room, Mr. Begemold's apartment, to the bedroom. Uh, there go the bed. This is uh, other table and uh, just a uh, notebook with different notes in it. Uh, this is myself extracting a board from a crawl space, which, uh... Where are you? Uh, in Mr. Begemold's bedroom. <coughs> I'm pointing out to the, uh, camera and counting out, uh, holes in the board. What type of holes? Uh, they appear to me to come from, uh, 22. The holes are more apparent from the opposite side of the board. It's the same crawl space, and uh, I think that's a 22 shell uh, is laying in the dirt there, which we took. That's a picture of a snake in the uh, aquarium, <coughs> showing the uh, excuse me, showing the bed, and I believe uh, it'll show you the weapons. What's that? Uh, that's the, one of the sold-off shotguns. And uh, here is the 22 Minx, and the, I think that's the Harrington and Richardson revolver. Where are we now? Uh, I think, I believe we're still in the bedroom, yes. We're in, still in Mr. Fitzgerald's bedroom. This is a drawer opened up showing <coughs> the weapon with the silencer on it. And, uh, boxes of ammunition and cleaning supplies. There's uh, some cleaning fluid above it in the box. Where are we now? Now we're in Mr. Fitzgerald's kitchen showing the other sold-off shotgun, which is atop the cupboard with an explosive device next to it. That's that thing with a small paper tube hanging out of the top. Down here, there's, a, there's an end cap similar to those used for the uh, pipe bomb explosive devices. Do you have any information in connection with the death of Anna Valesiewicz, sir? Yes. What is that? Well, <clears throat> I could probably best relate it in a way it happened, if you'd like. I'd like that. Well, I first became aware of the death of Anna Lesowitz, not by name, but by actually seeing her body. When did you see that body? Uh, it was the, it was, I think, a Sunday morning, weekend prior to uh, Labor Day, and I had just uh, returned from South Jersey. Whereabouts in South Jersey? Well, uh, I uh, entered the driveway and I met Mr. Bigginwald. He was uh, out. It was rather early in the morning, about I think 5, 5.30, something like that. 
And at that time, he told me that uh, he had a problem. And the problem turned out to be the body of Mr. Lesowitz was in the garage. Did you view the body? Yes, I did. When did you view the body? In comparison to time on Sunday, are we talking about Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon? Talking about first thing, very early Sunday morning. I pulled into the driveway, as I say, about 5 or 5.30 a.m. And I found Mr. Biggenwald out and about on the grounds, you know, standing in the driveway area when I pulled in. What kind of co what car were you using at this time? I was using Miss Bertucci's car. Which was? Uh, Mustang. Miss Bertucci still living with you at this time? No, she's not. When did Miss Bertucci move? Uh, I think somewhere around September. Well, we're talking about August, right? Yeah. So my question to you was, was Miss Bartucci living with you at this point? In time? Oh, yeah, she was. <coughs> what did you observe when you went into the garage? Uh, I observed the body of what appeared to be a female. Uh, it was lying down on the right side of the garage on a piece of rug. woman, I would say, it appeared to be a young female, approximately 100, maybe 120 pounds, something like that. I couldn't really make it out because she was uh, covered to the, almost to the waist area with a plastic bag. What did you do? <clears throat> I entered into a discussion with Mr. Biggenwald, uh, you know, the whys and wherefores of this. What did he tell you? Uh, he told me that, uh, well, he really didn't give me what I could consider a rational answer. He just told me that uh, it was something that had happened and uh, involved uh, Ms. Smith and himself. And uh, it really wasn't a, an answer that you could uh, expect in a situation like that. What did you do? Well, I was confronted with a body for what amount, as far as I was concerned, my garage. And uh, Mr. Biggenwald asked me if I would uh, help him dispose of the body, i.e. take it away, and I said, yes, of course I would. Uh, at that point, I, uh, we relocked the garage and locked up, and uh, I entered the house, and, uh, woke up Miss Bertucci, she uh, made me a breakfast, and uh, I ate the breakfast, and I went to bed. Did there come a time when you assisted Mr. Begumwald in disposing of that body? Yes. When was that? That evening, later. Do you know where Mr. Begumwald had been for that day? I believe he went over to his mother's in Staten Island. Do you know where that is in Staten Island? Yeah, 420 Sherrits Road. What happened when Mr. Begginwald came back? <clears throat> well, when he came back, uh, I was aware of him coming in the driveway, you know, the car, what have you. And uh, I saw him and entered into a further discussion regarding the body in the garage. And uh, he said he was going to uh, look for a place to put it, which he did. And what did you do? Well, I didn't do anything. I remained on the premises. Where was the body placed? Where was it placed? Yes. It couldn't have been moved. It was in the garage. Well, did there come a time when the body was removed? Oh, yes. And when was that? Uh, darkness had fallen. It was dark, and uh, Mr. Biggenwald had told me that he'd found a place to put it. So I assisted him in loading the body into the trunk of the car and uh, drove up uh, Sunset Avenue to Route 35, uh, across the highway, and uh, there's a turn off on the left, it's the first <coughs> after the Burger King parking lot. And uh, 